I want to start out by emphasizing a point that I think we've all covered this year, where uh, we kind of realized that hindsight is now, thankfully, just about 2020. <laughs> so looking at this year, we can realize it was quite a year of change and paradigm shifts and all sorts of new things that as the keyword of the year uh, seems to be, was unprecedented. And that's led to a lot of opportunity for reassessing and creating new words. If you ask me what the word of 2020 might be, for many of us, it is Welchmers. And I hope I'm saying that right. But this is a word that means world pain. And it's the sadness that you feel when the world as it is doesn't reflect what you think it should be. The wonderful thing about 2020 is that we have been able to have the opportunity to assess where our Welchmers is and how exactly we can go about changing the world or at least our perceived world into the one that we would like it to be. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about some ways that we can do this. And that begins with uh, a concept that I've put together this year. It may not be, uh, I may not be the only one who's come up with this, but it is something that has really guided me through all of the uh, themes of 2020. And that is the me, myself, and I am idea of a hero's journey. So me being ourselves, the unconscious, the individual, myself in the uh, Course in Miracles sort of term, the collective conscious, and the I am, our connection to God, source, that creative uh, idea behind everything that is going on. And if there's a hero in a story, then there's usually a villain or something to react against or something to change. And in our lives right now, the thing to change or to adapt or grow is really what the content is giving us, what the entertainment is giving us. I actually came upon this concept when I couldn't find a book to read that I actually wanted to finish. And I'm a Taurus son. I like finishing what I start. And I couldn't find anything that made me feel good, made me really want to keep reading. It all felt very anxious. So the themes of these characters, they led you into the darkness of anxiety, but they didn't really give a way back out. And it doesn't always have to be a happy ending, but something that shows that there is a tomorrow, there is a next step. And uh, kind of like in the movie Frozen, there is the next right thing. So I wanted to perpetuate more of that. And I thought if we could just get this more into the media, more into the collective, we could maybe even raise the vibration of mental health in general and doing this with the right timing with astrology would help. So a little bit about me just very briefly is that I am an internationally best-selling high vibe author. What I call this kind of uh, fiction and storytelling is high vibe storytelling. And I'm also an astrologer, a holistic healer, and I'm the co-CEO and executive editor of the Forgotten Storytellers program and writing community. So here are a few of the books that I've put out in the past year or so, and a little bit about my credentials, all those things, and just a little uh, brief picture journey of what's led me to where I am today. I did have the honor of working one-on-one -on -one with Marianne Williamson for quite a time, and it was illuminating and inspiring. And it led me to really understand, as she is very passionate as well about astrology, that there is a connection that is growing in this community of an understanding of astrology and mental health. So I would like to talk a little bit about the theta brainwave. This is actually the brainwave that we go into when we are dreaming, when we are meditating, and also when we're visualizing, which yes, plays into manifesting, but it's also the brainwave we go into when we zone out. So when you're driving and you zone out, or when you're watching television and your brain enters that restful state, listening to music, reading, all of those things, we enter the theta brainwave. And this is where our our unconscious decides the belief programs that we are going to operate on when it comes time to take action. This is where that foundation gets laid. So there are several houses that I could think of. I could probably link it to each and every one of them in some way, but these are the main houses that I look at when I'm looking at a person's type of meditation and therefore what type of entertainment they may benefit from. When I do uh, horoscopes for people, which I do on Instagram uh, every day, just to help out with setting the tone for the day, 
if someone is having a, a 12th house theme going on, I like to make them aware of what they've got going on in the background, what they have playing on the television in the background, or what kind of music's going on, because that's an active way to participate in that unconscious process, kind of like listening to classical music or studying before you go to sleep. So if we're going to talk about vibrations, understanding the whole concept of quote unquote vibes these days is very important. What is low vibe uh, vibration, low vibration entertainment if we're looking into something that is high vibration? Low vibes in my definition would be considered anxiety, fear, depression, or your general dis-ease. And looking at this picture, it kind of makes you feel bummed. You can already hear in your own mind that aw. So the idea is to take this awe and turn it into a better feeling, something more uplifting. So I present to you one of my favorite examples of understanding what high vibes feel like, and that is puppies. Puppies are something that remind you, or even cats. I know we had a discussion about cats and birds, our pets, these unconditional loving relationships that we have with animals. They invoke feelings of joy, feelings of love, comfort, safety, and then health. So my time as a holistic practitioner has also taught me the connection between a state of mind and emotion, and then the physical health that comes from that. And so generally your high vibration things are things that make you smile. And I actually just recently uh, listened to a podcast where Dr. Saffron Rossi, who is the co-author of Young on Astrology, mentioned that the archetypes of myth and astrology are much easier to connect with in storytelling form because it's something relatable. Stories are also very relatable. We take these characters and we see ourselves in them in some way or form. And so that brings me to the idea of unconscious entertainment. So what I mean by unconscious entertainment is the entertainment that we kind of expose ourselves to on a daily basis or the movies we choose to see and the trends that the collective conscious is providing as far as our en entertainment goes. We can track these trends, this collective conscious, in trending hashtags on social media, trending headlines, but in astrology, you can also see what might be trending based on transits. So this is one way that I like to apply divine timing to the approach to manifesting, creating, or just making general space for the possibility of higher vibration, theta uh, appreciative uh, entertainment, and just general um, output of art and, and other forms of entertainment that we spend our time on when we are feeling relaxed. So when you think about it, you think of what kind of movies are popular right now and what does that say about what's popular in the market and what does the market say about the population and where we're at? So there are certain shows that, are, that we leave playing in the background. There are certain genres that trend on Netflix. Can we control this a little bit more? Can we lean it in a more health conscious, mental health conscious direction? And I believe that we can if we are the ones choosing what we put our own time and energy into. If we watch the shows on Netflix that lead to a trend of more high vibration content, which is very subjective, but also there are some objective points of things that really encourage uh, going even into the darkness, exploring it, and then coming back out. That whole cycle that we experience all the time, even going from the first house to the 12th house in astrology, and then back to the first house again in this new cycle. So we can decide what becomes part of that conscious entertainment consumption by making the unconscious a little bit more conscious in choice. And we already see things like this that are out there. You can see that people create fandoms around these things like Lord of the Rings, Disney and Pixar, Legend of Zelda is my favorite, I'll admit, Star Wars, Harry Potter, and then Avatar The Last Airbender, the list goes on. It's those stories that even though it's not the easiest or even the brightest or the sunshiniest story, you go into Mordor and you find the struggle and then you resolve it in some way. You educate and then come back, maybe not again, bright and shiny, but you come back different and you do come back. So that's the kind of stuff that I like to see in the entertainment that I consciously consume. And I encourage other people to not only consume, but also create.
So we can create high vibe entertainment. And we can do this through the writing of stories, of television shows, of music, of every form of art that someone may experience and relax into. So that is where the high vibe hero's journey comes in. Again, everything is cyclical. We go through these cycles from a beginning through growth and to an end, which leads to a new beginning. So everyone is at a point in their own journey, in their own cycles. Even if you're looking at things like annual perfection, you can see where someone is in their journey, in their cycle, in that, that part of their life. So this is what it looks like to begin saving the world one individual at a time. And the reason that I prefer storytelling, I've written nonfiction and fiction and fiction is my favorite. And there's a certain reason for that. While nonfiction does give you direct information, it will address the subject head on. It gives you steps. It is very effective. This is why I wrote my nonfiction books. But not everyone is at a position or at a place where they're really present and ready to face a situation head on. Sometimes that's still really difficult. So fiction comes in because it's already a subconscious thing. You're choosing a story because you resonate with it because it fills that emotional void that you have at the time and you're looking to experience those feelings that you may not be having in your normal life. You're looking to broaden your horizons. There's a lot of um, nonfiction that is historic or travel or things like that that would fill a very similar need and it appeals and applies to all ages so kids are learning their vibes that they want to surround themselves with based on the children's stories that they're reading i was absorbed in books as a child in fact in a world where i didn't really feel like i fit i was a i still am a scorpio rising and a scorpio moon so i'm very brooding when i have my moments and I got lost in books. I have Pisces in the fifth house, and it was something that just helped me get through everything that was going on. If I couldn't find a social interaction that I wanted to be a part of in my real world, I found it in books. I found the kind of people I wanted to surround myself with in books. I set a precedent for what I wanted to find in my life based on the feelings I got from the books that I was consuming, from the television shows, from the stories. So it helps with the subconscious programming. It's already entertaining. You don't feel like you're doing work. So you're more relaxed into it. And there's a lot more allowing of processing and integrating to happen with that. It feels safe. And it also can be detached from biases. So we don't have to worry about triggering our defenses. And we can also use these themes, these metaphors to get messages out there where they can be viewed on a more objective scale. And it's a very expansive, limitless world where you can have magic that shows something. You can have characters that do whatever you need them to do. And there are no limits. So astrology plays into this in several ways. It's actually fascinating to me how many ways I can apply astrology to the writing process, which is why I uh, partnered with someone to create this Forgotten Storytellers program. Because if you look at astrology, it will help you with character creation. It'll show you their struggles. It'll show you all of these things. And it fleshes out this character into a real, believable, relatable human being, which is fantastic. It also can help you understand marketing demographics, where you are most likely to be able to communicate effectively. That's looking at things like your third house and communication and uh, even your career area, where you're going to be seen and have a better reputation to all sorts of things that can relate back into where you will be most comfortable and well received. Then we look at the trends. That's where the transits come in, letting us know what kind of feelings may be needed coming up and how we can write something that fills that need. And then down to uh, creation timing in the process. I love to use Mercury retrogrades for the purposes of editing, which feels a lot easier to do when the flow is not moving forward as much with writing as it would, let's say, with Mercury going direct. And then we also have launch elections. You can find a, a good timing, an electional time there that your story according to your chart and to the, the timing that it's going to need, what it's coming into in the year and the collective will be best received and most needed. And so this is why I actually wrote a structure 
called Writing the Hive IP Hero's Journey, where it takes each point of the writing process and helps plan out the book in a way that each point guides the reader through the analog of the characters through a point in their uh, integration process, their healing process, their emotional and uh, mental recovery process from beginning the journey, realizing that they want to make a change, realizing the solution that they thought was going to be the solution may not be, that's where the midpoint comes in, and then pursuing the true goal of this journey, which again, may not be sunshine and rainbows, but it is a continuation. It is something that turns what may be a struggle into a strength. And uh, Marianne, as you can see, was kind enough to lend a small quote to this one as well. And so talking about timing for stories, I got a little curious as I was preparing this speech and I wanted to see what kind of timing are we coming into right now? So thinking about the last time we had sort of an explosion of vibrational stories really creating a fandom. For me as a fellow millennial with Pluto in Scorpio, I remember very vividly Harry Potter becoming a huge thing and the story, give or take, may be a, a well-crafted story or it may have things to be desired, but it really does have a community around it of people who indulge in that world and find what they're looking for unconsciously there. So I think it's a really great example of the kind of stories that people were looking for at the time and how it filled that need. So when I looked at it, I decided to use the United States release date since that may be where it really caught its fire to become the phenomenon that it is right now. And you can see it had a grand trine, the sun was very near the North Node, Mercury was in Leo, but we're gonna look at that in my next chart. Another fascinating thing was that Jupiter was in its home sign of Pisces. Now, this year in May, we have Jupiter coming back into Pisces for a short spell. We also have Mercury close to the North Node and to the Moon in Gemini. So it seems that coming into 2021, but also in 2022, when Jupiter goes back into Pisces to hang out for a while, along with Neptune being around, this is a great time to be writing high vibration stories. It's a similar time that's going to really expand on that unconscious Pisces vibration of allowing for things to really get down into the psyche and create this this wellness and we'll be driven towards that by all of the things including Chiron sort of giving us that extra wind and drive to be able to move in that direction this passion for it and the work ethic that we're looking for. Crystal and Matt so, about 10 minutes left. Perfect I'm actually almost about done I think I did a really good job <laughs> condensing this from my usual beautiful. speech length. The beautiful thing is you cannot mess this up Yes, we use astrology and we apply it to all of these themes, but it's impossible to mess it up because the planets aren't going to move. I say this to my parents all the time when they ask me, when is the 2020 situation going to end? And the reality is Jupiter is going to be where Jupiter is going to be tomorrow. Jupiter is going to be where it's going to be in January. So you know that you are moving along with this energy and that is going to be there for you. And that is one of the reasons why uh, my friend and I created the Forgotten Storytellers, which actually helps people write their stories with divine timing programmed in a way that is going to serve people on a subconscious collective level moving forward into this new situation we've got going on, this new building of a new world and a new paradigm that we're creating 2021 and moving forward. So it is such a joy to be able to uh, realize this right now and move it forward. And I just wanted to wrap this up a little bit with a quote from an acclaimed Pixar director talking about storytelling. So we've heard about it from a Jungian perspective, but now we'll see it from a storyteller who is saying, uh, what you're trying to do when you tell a story is to write about an event in your life that made you feel some particular way. And what you're trying to do when you tell a story is to get the audience to have that same feeling, that feeling is what we're trying to tap into when we use the hypnosis and theta brainwave in the, the course of a story. So with that, I'm going to be able to wrap it up and I can thank you all so much for giving me this time and space to speak on this subject that I am so passionate about. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Crystalyn. Hi. <laughs> that was amazing. That was a oh, lot of fun.
<laughs> um, I was curious about, you know, how how you've encountered with people that you've worked with where you're using their chart and encouraging them to start to think in this way about like almost a more creative way of engaging with their chart you know where where do you really start like what is your first the very first thing that you look at and maybe that's a launching off point for people to experiment with their own charts yeah, so the first thing I do when I'm giving consultations, and I do provide storyteller consultations for aspiring writers or just writers who are looking to up their game a little bit and get into that, I start by validating the writer. So we start with your big three, your sun, your, uh, your moon, and your rising. So you understand where you are. Then we look at your Chiron, because that's what you came here learning to heal. So this is going to be something that helps you understand what you may be here to heal in other people. You also end up looking at the North Node, the 10th house, the third house, and the fifth house to get an idea of your writing style, your creativity, and what platform you may be most well received in Beautiful. based on the signs and planets. That's awesome. Yeah, I think that gives people a little flavor of what to, you know, where to go in. Uh, I don't know if anybody else had any other questions. There's definitely people that are interested in getting the book that you mentioned. Um, and also, uh, also, let's see, there is a question. Um, well, I think that's more specific to your practice. But if you use secondary progressions or solar arcs or if, if there's a predictive method that you use as well with any of the creative process. Yeah, so I use transits, I use annual perfections, and I'm expanding my knowledge of zodiacal releasing right now as well. Those are my preferred methods right now as I as I learn and take in all the other ones. Beautiful. Yeah, there's a we can have a whole suite of predictive methods. <laughs> At some point. Um, well, thank you so much. It was really inspiring to hear. Uh, Brandon, did you have a question? Sorry, I don't see hands very easily. So, I, no, yeah, go yeah, ahead. I um, figured it'd be easier than typing it out. Yeah, no, that's um, right. I think that um, one of, like, what you were really focusing on is, like, the actual writing, um, like, getting the writing out to people. I think that's uh, mostly what you were talking about, but I'm actually really fascinated by the um, the character writing. So like those those charts of like Harry Potter's birthday, I'm like mm -hmm. really fascinated by that and like how you would like kind of um, start out with the character, but then like find a chart and then from the chart actually figure out like actually how that character might act. Um, I, I would be kind of uh, interested if you like have a process for that. And if it's like, you kind of start with a core quality and then you like look for a specific sun and moon sign. And then you like are the rest of the chart is revealed to you. And that that's mm -hmm. kind of what I was curious about. So there's a couple ways to go about it, depending on how much you already know about the character. There's certain things that I actually have editors who are working on this right now. They took my book and applied it and it was the biggest honor ever. Cool. Um, but you can choose what you want them to need. So what they need is often gonna be in their sun. You can kind of create a chart just by drawing it on your own. Or yeah. what I did with my most recent book was I knew I wanted the timing to be around a similar feel in the world as right now. So I found the next Saturn-Pluto conjunction in Capricorn <laughs> and pushed my story to that time. And then Ooh. I knew that I wanted my hero to be born a certain zodiac sign. And so yeah. I looked in there and found the best suited thing to go with what I knew he needed. And then I just use that as guidelines, but it helps me when I'm thinking, well, what would he be? I really don't know. Well, someone born at that time would have this house system and this kind of uh, planetary alignment. So it really does help when you're feeling stuck, it shatters that writer's block because there's limitless inspiration. Totally, that's so, yeah. so cool. Thank you. I saw AH, you have a question? Yeah, I've got a question, it's Ailey. Um, I wanted to ask you about, you said uh, Chiron's about uh, learning to heal. Are you talking about if you see Chiron in Aries or Taurus or something, it's something that you're healing in yourself or something that you're healing uh, out there that in the world with your story? Or So I think it's a little bit of both. I think it's what you come here healing in yourself. And then because you have that experience, 
it's sort of kind of what you attract in other people so that you can help them as well. It's a, a, I take and then give to other people through my own experience. So I like to view Chiron as it's the wounded healer. So it's the wound I have that I'm teaching other people to heal as well, because I'm just one step ahead of that process. Mm -hmm. And you, oh, is that another little thing? You said something about um, where someone would be best received. Mm -hmm. uh, what, can you maybe tease that out a little bit, what you, what you mean? Do you mean like for, if they're in water signs or? Yeah, so I look, at, I look at the 10th house to look at what kind of career they would be good at. So that career vibe, if they're already trying to be a writer, then it's uh, what kind of audience might you be appealing to? So that kind of applies to when you're looking at like different hashtags you want to market your book to and, and where your ideal reader might be. These are the ty type of people and the type of career that you're looking at. So this is the kind of uh, convention you'd want to go to. This is the kind of, that's a little bit of 11th house as well. The kind of mm -hmm. um, energy you want to surround yourself with. And then the 11th house is if you want to find your audience and surround yourself with the people who are really going to help support you as this writer when you're looking for like conventions and things to go to or groups to be a part of. We look at that. It's a big struggle for writers to find that ideal reader and ideal <laughs> audience. So I like to build that in. I can't imagine because you want to get the message to the right people and, and mm -hmm. don't you? It's really yeah, fun. You always forget that it's what you already have that you want to share with people. So we, we put a lot of pressure on that and this helps relieve it to just say there's evidence of this here. Yeah, no, it's really interesting. Yeah, thanks so much, Crystalline. Thank you.